Okay, I'm gonna steal you for okay. a sec. And we're gonna walk to my car. Get in, stay dry. I'm always curious about useful technology and anyone that knows me knows that I love to follow trends when it comes to fashion and as the both of these worlds intersect more and more you will definitely want to hear my guest today help explain this shifting landscape. Megan McDowell is a journalist for Women's Wear Daily covering all things fashion and tech related so welcome Megan. Thank and, you. And I am so happy to say that she's a personal dear friend of mine. So thanks for taking the time out. Honored. On a rainy day, <laughs> a couple of days away from Christmas. It's a treat. It's a treat. Welcome to the back seat of my car. I know. I love it here. It's very comfy. <laughs> I want to talk about retail and the act of shopping. There was a time when, a long time ago, when my mom would just drop me off at the mall, mm -hmm. let me do my thing and pick me up in a couple hours, and that was my shopping. Sounds great. <laughs> Amazon totally changed all of that with yes. online shopping, but but there's much more disruption beyond Amazon. How are, what's the face of the way people are shopping changing now? The customer doesn't really care where they interact with the brand, and it's now just connecting the customer purchase path from an ad on their mobile phone to checking out online and going to pick it up in store. The purchase path is totally changing and merging, and no company can be in one um, one lane. Everyone's in all different lanes. Is the death of the shopping mall greatly exaggerated? Are people still going to the mall these days? I mean, judging by this holiday traffic, I think people are shopping <laughs> in real stores. Um, and I think the role of the mall is changing a little bit, and people are smart to reimagine what it means to have a physical store. It's not just only to go and make a purchase. It might be more of a marketing tool or a sample shop or even like a, a very nicely decorated warehouse, you know, it could be seen as that. I'm hearing a lot of things about chatbots. Yes. How, how are they being worked into this, ex you know, shopping experience? Okay, so chatbots are um, a way to communicate with the customer on some sort of mess messaging platform. And they have a lot of buzz this year. Um, Mark Zuckerberg opened up Facebook Messenger for chatbots. So that created a lot of buzz. And so far this year, we're seeing a lot of experimentation and a lot of retailers trying it out in different ways. I think next year, 2017, we're really gonna see how the customer uses them. So some people are thinking to use them as a customer service tool. So instead of calling and pushing one, two, three, you know, to talk to a customer service, mm -hmm. that function can be automated with a chatbot. Is the intelligence around a chatbot actually good enough for them to understand what I want, what my needs are? They're getting there, and I think smart retailers are making it to where it doesn't imitate a human. They're not hiding the fact that it's a chatbot. And you can always escalate to a human if you have a request that the bot cannot serve. A lot of it is yes or no questions, so it's sort of like a multiple choice question, so you pick your journey as you go. Fashion companies are learning, they have to move faster, they have, a lot of them have retail labs, so they can test, test um, in one location, they can test different technologies, and in that way they are acting like a tech company, and that's one of the key things that tech companies do is they try a lot of ideas and they move very quickly. So from chatbot to artificial intelligence, yes. Uh, are we going to see what kind of what kind of new things are we going to see from AI in this in this line? The thing with AI that's interesting is that that means that it gets smarter with time. So if you're Stephanie and you were looking for a black heel with this type of toe, this type of leather, and the chatbot served you an option and you bought that option, the next time a customer who's similar to you is having a similar request, that chatbot or that AI will get smarter and recommend that shoe, the shoe that is more likely to sell. So it learns your habits over time and it can use that for other customers as well. Uber. Yes. How are they taking a piece of this pie? So I think what's interesting about Uber is it's not just a human delivery service, it can be a product delivery service. So if Uber was able to, and they're already starting to do that, deliver items from small stores in towns, they're essentially allowing them to compete with someone like Amazon because the drivers, when they don't have a person in the car, they can just drive a product and deliver stuff and deliver multiple things to one neighborhood. Um, and I think it'll be interesting as Uber possibly invests in autonomous vehicles um, and has cars without drivers, I think that will be really interesting to watch. Would you say that Uber and Amazon then are pretty much at an arms race when it comes to what you call the last mile? Yes, I think um, that's very forward thinking, but I think you know Amazon, they just experimented with their first drone delivery in the United Kingdom. Um, 
if they were to invest in autonomous vehicles, I mean, they already have their own planes, Amazon and Uber could easily become competitors as far as deliveries. And I think the last mile, as you say, like getting something to someone within the hour, that's the, the holy grail of retail at this point. I got something for you no, you for didn't. the holidays. Yes, Are I you did. Serious? Yes, I did. <laughs> you know, we both love fashion. Okay. We both love clothes. <laughs> you know, we love good brands, right? Like uh, that, that Alexander McQueen. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. We went to that Rent the Runway party. Yes. And so I wanted to give you something in that same vein. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> there you go. With a bicycle. Yeah, oh my yeah. Goodness, I love it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna open it, right? Okay, yes, okay. please do, please oh do. Oh my goodness! Don't you just love, and you know what? I loved it so much. I loved it so much, I got something similar. Oh my God, this is the chicest. I this think, is the chicest yeah, thing I've ever seen. I think we I've need to seen. wear this. You can always like technology. <laughs> You're giving <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say I was an early adopter ever, no. I've never been an early adopter. I've never been fascinated you know, drawn to the tech industry, but now I love it because it's truly leading the world. I mean, it's the future. It's based, I love history and I love that I feel like I'm living history. Living out here, reporting on fashion and technology is the center of innovation and it, it's, you know, it's cliche sounding, but it's truly changing the world very quickly. So I'm absolutely. Absolute. <laughs> and, and isn't your post the first San Francisco based post for WWD? Yes, it's the first time they've had a tech reporter out here. So it's very forward thinking and I feel like so many more people could join me out here because there's so many, every single company affects retail and commerce, Google, Apple, Facebook. I mean, they're all very quickly affecting the way that um, sales are made in retail. All right, Megan, so why fashion? It's interesting. Um, I grew up without TV, so I was always a reader. And I remember one day I got, I convinced my mom to buy me a Vogue in the grocery store checkout line. And I was probably 12 or 13. And it completely changed my life um, to see this magical fantasy world of fashion. And then at the same time, we moved around a lot when I was young. And I really saw all different styles and cultures. And I realized the power of how you look to affect your life. And I realized that it communicates who you are. And it's a personal billboard and it's an opportunity to to have fun and to, to, to communicate without words and so I um, that's why I could never be like Mark Zuckerberg and wear a gray t-shirt every day it would be it would take so much joy out of my life looks like we are here at your next stop um, yeah. Megan thank you so much for spending some time with me my pleasure thanks for the ride absolutely this is great. This is absolutely great. Communicating without words, let's see you do that now with the sweater walking yes, down. This should be all about holiday cheer. Thank you for, for getting my message right. Absolutely. Alrighty. Okay, bye. bye. When I met Megan, I knew that we'd be buds for life. We both like to read, we love fashion, and we both work in technology. So what a pleasure it was to have spoken to her and have her explain just really the tip of the iceberg of what's going on in the fashion technology scene. If you guys are interested in reading more about her work, visit her at www.com. You won't be disappointed in her writing. So guys, that's it for the end of 2016. If it's Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, or whatever celebration, make it merry, and I'll see you guys next year.